Welcome to the Sample Chapter Podcast, the show where authors read a sample chapter from one of their books. Here's your host, Jason A. Meiske. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Sample Chapter Podcast. I am your host, Jason A. Meiske, and I'm thrilled to... <laughs> I'm always thrilled, aren't I? I'm thrilled to be back again and uh, to have you here. Thank you so much for everybody that keeps coming back, downloading the show, subscribing. The show is growing, and I'm I'm overwhelmed with gratitude towards you all. Thank you so much. We have a really great show again this week, but let's start things off once again with a big thank you for Podcast Garden. Podcast Garden is the place you want to go if you're interested in starting your own show. If you're looking for more shows, they have all kinds of categories, lots and lots of different shows shows on there. Podcast Garden is the place to go to start for free. Hey, speaking of Podcast Garden, I'm going to do a little shout out to my buddy Roger Colby from last week's show. His show that we talked about on on here, Three Cylinder Star Drive, is actually on Podcast Garden. I'm the dummy who didn't think about that at the time, didn't even consider that, hey, you know what? You're on the same network as we are. So when you're on there and you're listening to this show, make sure to hop over to Three Cylinder Star Drive. You can listen to Roger and Richard as they discuss everything pop culture and TV and film and a little bit of books in there. Uh, one, of, one of my favorite things is at the end of their show when they do their dollar rental of the week. Uh, you know, they're always looking for recommendations. So, hey, guys, I'm going to recommend one for you. How about, oh, let's see. How about Megaforce? I don't know if you'll be able to find it. It's from uh, the early 80s, and it's it does not hold up <laughs> at all. I Actually, I think the whole thing is on YouTube. So if you guys are listening, or if somebody else is interested, if you want a cheesy 80s movie, yeah, Megaforce would be the one to uh, to check out. Uh, I also want to send a big thank you out to my, my producer extraordinaire. Uh, she helps me with a little bit of the editing on the show. She also put together that wonderful graphic for Sample po- Chapter Podcast, that little picture that you see that, uh, that lets you know where you are and what you're listening to. Uh, Kaylee Joy, uh, she is my uh, not just my producer, but she's also my daughter. She's got a history with uh, video editing, uh, a little bit of music editing, stuff like that. She also has her own YouTube channel. It's just on YouTube. Kaylee Joy is the name of it. She has, I guess you'd call it uh, the Adventures of a Single Mom kind of show. Uh, that's been quite the trendy thing for the last couple of years. And her show has been gaining a lot of traction and picking up the attention of other shows like hers. Uh, so that's been Really great, really proud of her, uh, but she helps us out a lot here, so make sure to go check out her show as well. So uh, one of the things we're going to be discussing today, and it comes up in the, the author interview, is book reviews. Um, and it comes, it comes up just totally incidental, but it, you know, it made me think about it that you know, book reviews are they're, they're very important to other people and the author, especially the author. Uh, even though authors, you know, we're, we're often telling ourselves, hey, don't listen to what somebody said. If they, you know, if you get a bad review, you know, it's, uh, don't pay attention to that. But you know what? Uh, you get enough of them. I think it is important as an author. It is important to to look and see, well, are they are they all saying the same kind of thing? You know, maybe there's something that you're doing wrong as an author. So that's, that's important uh, to go on there and, and make yourself a, a review. Certainly everything I've read in the last couple of years, I go on and I make a review. If you are a fan of books, which I mean, hopefully you are if you're listening to this show, if you're a fan of books, if you're an author, if you're reading something right now, make sure to go in there and leave a review. It helps other people find it. It helps the author grow. You know, if you found it because of this show, make sure to go on there and, and mention that, you know, hey, I found this book because of the sample chapter podcast and that'll help us grow as well and you know that'll be that'd just be awesome i would i'd be totally thrilled uh <laughs> once again i'm thrilled again to find out that somebody wrote a review based on this show uh speaking of reviews don't forget to go into apple itunes don't forget to go on google play wherever it is that you're listening to this show and leave us a review that way it also helps us grow all right so we've had a couple of sci-fi writers so far this week, no sci-fi. Uh, this week's author is a realist and regional author. Her name is R.M. Kinder. She writes characters that are in realistic ways. They have a lot of passion. They have community. Uh, is a big deal for her. For example, in her books, people are coming together in groups of musicians. And it's that community that they have, which is something that she's very familiar with. 
So she uh, she likes to write in those. She she finds it fascinating community mentality that happens no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing. And so she writes in those those types of ways, and I find it I find it wonderful. I have read one of her books in the past, and I, I describe it as a lovely lovely book uh, because it was it was just fantastic. It was it, you know I highly recommend it. She has been printed in uh, among others, Passages North, the Notre Dame Review. The North American Review, Tales of Psychological Suspense, and none other than the New York Times. Uh, like I said, and many others. She has several books out at this point. She has several in the works, with a few looking to come out later this year. You can find her on Goodreads, on Amazon. She has a blog on WordPress. She has her own videos on YouTube. But the best place to find her is on rmkinder.net. Don't go to .com. You're going to hear about that. Uh, you may hear about that. That uh, website, the .com website, was was stolen out from under her. So don't go there. Go to rmkinder.net. Anyway, enough of me talking. You guys are not here to listen to me. You're here. You come back each week to listen to the authors and uh, to hear their books. So without any further ado, R.M. Kinder. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Sample Chapter Podcast. Today, I'm here with my friend, R.M. Kinder. Ms. Kinder has uh, authored several books, and today she's been kind enough to meet with us and tell us a little bit about herself. Good morning. Good morning. It's nice to be here. Tell the, uh, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. Well, I like to think of myself as a writer, but most of my life I've introduced myself as a teacher or a retired professor, mm-hmm. but now I... Uh, I mostly write, so I I think I'm an older writer, and I'm from Missouri, so I consider myself a regionalist, local writer. I'm from southeast Missouri. I write a great deal about southeast Missouri, but also about the the southwest, because I love Tucson. And I can't stay with one genre, which is something I've discovered. That's uh, just recently. (laughs) I, I have written a number of books, but they don't fall into one area. Mm-hmm. I, I read your uh, the Universe Playing Strings, and that was just lovely. I, I really enjoyed that one. Well, thank you. I think you wrote a review for me, too, on Amazon. I did, I did yes. I remember, and that was glowing, and I really thank you because it was oh. unsolicited and therefore <laughs> wonderful. It was my pleasure. It was thank a great you. book. Uh, so what uh, what kind of stories have you found that speak to you most? You mean when I'm writing or when I'm reading? Either way. Mostly character stories, Mm -hmm. and I do like a good plot. I like uh, a mystery plot. I want everything to be real honest and straightforward, whether or not it's mystery, fantasy. I don't really read romances other than, uh, well, some mysteries are romances. But I like honest writing, which is the writer's not playing any tricks. Mm -hmm. They're not hiding something. You know, for example, if you have a character whose, whose mind you go into... But you don't divulge something that later on proves he was the murderer or something oh, like that. Mm-hmm. That takes a great skill mm-hmm. to be honest and go into the mind and yet not divulge something. Mm-hmm. So I like people handle a point of view that's believable. Okay. Right. And oh, and especially writers who have special knowledge. Like who is the writer who writes about race tracks? Mysteries are always have to do with races. Hmm. I think its last name is Francis, but I'm not sure. Okay. Or like, you know, um, Stan in our group, he mm-hmm. was writing a uh, writing a story or something, and he was using details from the Ozarks mm-hmm. and legends and songs, and I love that kind yeah. of thing. <laughs> now, music seems to also be a very big influence in your life. You bet. <laughs> <laughs> and you play a lot of uh, yes, instruments. Do. So I do. do you... Do, do you um, play at, at events regularly? I have in the past. I've been in a number of bands and never a big name band, but uh, local bands. And in Tucson, I played in a Serbian band called Jivali for a while. And I say Serbian, but I didn't mm. understand it. I just could learn the lyrics. Mm-hmm. And I still play locally. I've had local groups here. And I'm not a top-notch musician, but I'm an ardent aficionado. I love... <laughs> Uh, especially local musicians. I like the community within a community. Mm-hmm. If it's music or writers or bikers. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, I like 
the buildup of communities, how rich they are. Okay, yeah. So I try to write about that too. Well, and that, and that came out in in universe. In this book. Yeah, that was that was really great. Um, so is it the the group settings then you think that uh, uh, you like to use in, in all of your stories, or is it specific? No, um, not really. An absolute gentleman was first person point of view, and that was a single person who was a killer, a serial killer, but. He was in a tight community. He was in a, an academic community. Mm-hmm. And so he was more isolated from the community, as were some other people. Actually, though, that's a rarity for me because my short stories are what I like to write, and there it's almost always based on a community and different individuals mm-hmm. within a community. And I have two books I hope to publish, and each of them have five characters. Oh, okay. So I do have a community, a little tight community that's dealing with another community. Mm-hmm. So I guess I do that. I think in terms of community. Okay. As you mentioned, uh, An Absolute Gentleman, which is one of your books. Uh, let us know, tell us a little bit, just, uh, what's this book about? You mean An Absolute Gentleman? Yes. Well, it's about, of all, it's a, it's a college professor who happened to be raised by a severely unmedicated schizophrenic mother had a horrific childhood, and is paranoid, schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what his mental condition is. But the thing is, I knew a serial killer. I uh, I knew one in Tucson, and I dated him briefly, and was instrumental in convicting him, and he wound up going to prison. But that caused me to research serial killers Mm -hmm. and how they always seem to fit into a community really well. (laughs) And so it took me about 10 years to write that book. Oh, okay. But I wrote it, wrote first person, it got published by Counterpoint Press. And he is a professor in a small town like Warrensburg. Actually, Warrensburg is the setting, but it's called something else. And he gradually, he kills somebody and he gets caught. He, the story starts with him in prison talking about what happened. Okay. And you know he's going to get out. I've thought about doing a sequel. But... <laughs> That'd be interesting. I've heard a lot about that book. That's one of the one of your books I, I've been meaning to pick up for a while. It is still selling, <clears throat> and so that's good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, what uh, you mentioned, you've got uh, two books coming soon. Is that what you're working on right now? Well, they're not going to be published soon, unless I can get them to. I really have three books that I want to place now. Mm-hmm. One of them is a book called The Ghost House, and that's where there's five women. They want to find a ghost. <laughs> and uh, I love that book. And the other one is The Witch God Loved. Oh, okay. Yeah, because, you know, God's supposed to hate witches, but this <laughs> is a witch. I write realism, but here I am with two fantasies. <laughs> but they're not fantasies in my opinion. They're realistic, mm-hmm. but this is a ghost house and the witch book. But the one I want to play is first, even though those are I wrote earlier. It's called Saving Zeno, and it's a very short book, and it's about a cat. And I want to place it first because the others are sort of violent, and and this is a loving book about a neurotic animal. And it's based on fact, but I write it like fiction so that I can have a young couple own it. But I love the book. It's, It's just, he was a marvelous cat. He was neurotic. He stayed neurotic for 18 years. But he was beautiful, and everybody in the neighborhood knew him. He would walk. He had patterns of walking in blocks, like marking off his territory, and his tail would be up, and he would... But he was scared of every other cat in the world, but he would not not walk. And I thought, there's... Yeah, I love that cat. That's the book I hope to publish. Okay. Because, you know, I'm an, I'm an older writer, and so if I'm going to leave a legacy... I would like to have the upbeat, clean books be my best books and not the one about a man who killed women. <laughs> right. I didn't make it graphic. Mm-hmm. I didn't make that one graphic. Serial killers want you to talk about them, you know. Mm. And right. so I'd rather leave the clean stories. But what okay. will happen is what will happen. You write your books and you hope the universe places them for you. Yeah, yeah. And so we maybe we can expect that this year? I hope. Right. I hope that's. I've got my query letter ready. I'm ready to try. Oh, fantastic! Well, uh, so tell us a little bit. Uh, you're reading from uh, the Universe Playing Strings today. Mm-hmm. Tell the audience about this book. Okay, this book is about a community of of musicians in the Southwest, specifically Tucson, 
in the 80s, in the mid-80s. I recently read a review of it who, glow, who wrote glowing praise, except he said he could never figure out the era, that it could have been the 70s or the 80s, but he wasn't sure, but there were no cell phones. Well, the songs in here are a clue to whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that there are no cell phones. But there are four... Uh, main characters and when I first submitted it there were six or seven Mm -hmm. and the publisher wanted me to cut out some characters and make them not cut them out but reduce diminish their roles Mm -hmm. so that they would be supporting characters and not main characters Mm -hmm. so I have four characters and the one I'm going to read there Mm -hmm. of the four two are real dominant one is Pop Bradshaw 70 year old fiddler Mm -hmm. from Oklahoma who ran away from uh, embarrassment over believing a, a bad woman The other is Amy Chandler, and she's young. She's in her 20s, but she's a top-notch guitarist because of her style Mm -hmm. and her love of it. It just feeds, you know, she hears music in the air, sort of. And so I'm going to read. She's in a bad relationship. She's in a relationship with a man who can't play quite as well as she can, not with that vibrant style, Mm -hmm. and he's controlling and in this section, it will be about a jam session. So there may be that she's been invited to. There may be times when you're not sure what's going on. Just remember it's a jam session. Then you'll know. Well, that's fantastic. Tell the, uh, the listeners, how can they find you? Uh, you're, you have a presence online? Yes, I have a, a website. It's rmkinder.net. Don't go to rmkinder.com. You will just get a nasty message. <laughs> go to rmkinder.net. Or you can find me at, at WordPress. And if you just Google R.M. Kinder, I'll pop up because I have a YouTube channel with local musicians. So you can find me that way, too. And there's a link from my website to both of these. Fantastic. And I'll make sure and put uh, <coughs> links to each of these in the, in the show notes as well. So, well, thank you so much. Uh, I look forward to uh, when, when the next book comes out, hopefully this year. And would you come back and uh, read a, a piece from it? You bet. I owe you. You wrote that nice review. Oh, I'm going well, to review your pleasure. book. You just wait. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, R.M. Kinder and Universe Playing Strings. Amy. Amy lied to George. I'm going to practice with the ladies, she said. Our music would drive you crazy if we did it here. All sob ballads, cry, 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 die, die, die. Yep. Will you be late? I doubt it. Then she drove all high from guilt out to Big Bob's party. With the night cool desert sweeping around her, the car bouncing along the rutted road, Big Bob had asked her not to tell George. She should have said that I won't come either, but she hadn't. She was a selfish woman. She couldn't feel bad, though. Her whole being was humming with music, and that drowned out everything else. Winter Dog was there, in Bob's long, ramshackle living room with their banjoist, sweet Davy Moss, driving Big Sandy through the walls. Davy fascinated her. He was as short as she, and so white he seemed really vulnerable. Maybe even sunshine could kill him. She didn't know. Behind black thick glasses, his pale eyes shivered all the time, and she wanted to look at him until they stilled. She thought that could happen if she were intent enough. Pete and Molly were talking to a fiddler visiting Big Bob. Pete and Molly did Cajun. Pete was an olive-skinned dude with real broad shoulders, black hair, and an angry, bony face. He could play anything okay, but he was best at training Molly. She was blonde, tall, and very slender, like a will-o'-the-wisp ghost, and so shy she'd drop her eyes if a fly landed on her. Amy had slept with Pete once a long time ago, and he was good. It was like making love to a devil, all intense and silent and angry. That's probably why Molly stayed with him. Everybody knew. Amy unpacked her guitar and stepped up to Winter Dog, tuning as she moved in. She locked on the brake a second before Davy moved aside for her. When she finished the break, she stepped back slightly, and Davy came forward. She had joined them smoothly and courteously and had not flubbed the opportunity to play. After the song tagged out, Bob handed her a beer, and she took a long swig and then set it at her feet. She undid the top two buttons of her blouse to free her arms. Hey, girl, Davy said, we want to keep our mind on the music. She jiggled her breast. What about your hands? Say free. 
He ran his scale up the banjo neck while he looked at her. You bet, free and fast. She did just fill runs on the next two tunes to make up for being pushy. You've really come along, Davy said at some point, and she nodded like the men always did. It had taken her a long time to learn the right language. She could have said thanks or thank you kindly, but nothing more, or she wouldn't yet be good enough. You weren't good just because your music was hot. You had to know the game. When Davy took a beer out to the wraparound screened-in porch, she followed him. It was a little chilly out there, but pleasant. The winter desert softened by moonlight. Where are you guys playing now? she asked. We split a weekend gig with Pete and Molly down in Sonoida, the horseshoe. Cajun one weekend, bluegrass the next. You ought to come down. I'd like to. You could sit in on a set. She almost said, you're kidding, but caught herself. Might do that. She chewed her thumbnail from the contained joy. She thought his stubby white fingers were endearing and his reddish ears. I've never heard anyone who could beat you on the banjo, she said, and never expect to. She stood before he could answer, very matter-of-factly. I'm going in, see if I can do some Cajun bass. What if it wasn't her music he liked? She wasn't going to think about it. He had invited her, and she would by damn play with them. She forgot to worry about George until the party was over. The road to the highway was all dirt and snaked through the desert a long time. George could be somewhere on this road, spying. What if she saw his car parked along here, waiting to prove her deception? She hummed Georgia Pines and tapped the steering wheel. What if George had heard about the party from someone else? He'd make her pay. Her pleasure in the evening was being worried away. That itself was a huge payment. At home, George was watching television. How'd it go, he said. Okay, some tight harmony. Something in the way he watched her, maybe the twisting of his mustache or the twitching of his feet on the coffee table, clued her in. He knew or suspected. You watch television all evening, she asked. No, Big Bob had an impromptu jam and I went out there for a couple of hours. She felt the burn in her cheeks. Why didn't he tell me? You weren't here and I didn't know where you girls were practicing. This was a new kind of lying, sort of a master lie. George was claiming to have been at a party she'd just left. Who all was there? Winter Dog, Pete and Molly, William Cullen, that Canadian guy. She had heard about it for sure. Damn, she said, and almost added, you could have come looking for me, but at the last moment she caught herself. What if he had? What about Pop Bradshaw? Was he there? No. Nope. He was studying the television now, but his feet were still twitching in his mouth, too. He was a live wire holding still. I'm sorry I missed it, she said. Yeah. She expected a blow or a blow-up, some kind of fearful explosion, but he went to bed in his silent wrath, and finally she followed him. His non-sleep waited the bedroom. She couldn't understand. Then she stumbled on the reason, maybe the reason, he couldn't rage at not being invited because that made it real and worse. The lie let her be the one excluded and him the one invited. It was false, but still the only reality they had acknowledged, so in a way it was real. The whole idea hurt her head, but she knew she was right. Now she had to feel sorry for him in a different way, deeper, more whole, for a trapped person. And there you have it. That was R.M. Kinder reading from her book, The Universe Playing Strings. Didn't I tell you she was great? Uh, I hope to have her back on the show again real soon. Hopefully that one of those books that she's got will come out this year. Hey, thank you guys so much for listening and coming back every week. Please uh, leave us a review. Tell your friends about us. Tell others about us. If you have an author you want us to interview, let us know at facebook.com or at samplechapterpodcast at gmail.com. Make sure to leave a review for any books that you read especially if you hear one from on our show and we will talk to you guys again real soon bye